All right, here we go. Game two of West Sider versus Earning Puma. We have uh, West Sider as Brazil and Earning Puma as Belgium. All right, Hans, everything looks good. Yeah, Belgium going for a trade post. Can be really, can be a really big advantage, getting that tra trade post. I'm surprised nobody's playing Greece on this map. In my opinion, if you see water, you go Greece. So we got the explorers here. 90 food treasure. Let's see if red goes for it. He will be looking for his opponent, it seems. Nice little 60 wood treasure if he notices that. He won't be going that way though. Alright, red has discovered. Blue here. Alright, looks like he will be attempting this 135 experience treasure. Thanks to Jesuit Priest, he'll be having an easier time dealing with polar bears. Jesuit Priests can also uh, heal the Explorer, so we'll probably see an action right now. So, um, Brazil's pretty good with clearing treasures. Will we see it right now? Hopefully we'll see it. No, we didn't get to see it. Alright, so, um, but the thing is they can just heal the explorer, so you can you go for treasure after treasure quite easily. Let's see the decks of each player. So, some... Alright, we got <laughs> Maka Matthews there. Perfect. Uh, looks like he will be going for an aggressive gameplay. Getting lots of unit cards in. Let's go for Belgium now. He will do the same. Alright, so the Belgian Rangers transform into uh, bicycle infantry no longer is in the, is no longer in the game. So very balanced in that sense. So this will be 150 food treasure. Okay, that's big. He's already on f a lot of wood. Belgium does need a lot of wood for their units. Well, there was a Greek mirror match. So I don't know about Balkan cities being unreliable. Greece is very reliable, especially on water maps. Esok Indonesia has a big wood start, so going Greece on that map is a big advantage. You can get double docks, age one. Oh yeah, Mumu also used Serbia. So, uh, in the Puerto... <laughs> big oof. So yeah, uh, in the Puerto versus... Happy Mumu. We saw a total of three Balkan picks, one being Serbia for Happy Mumu, and then both players going in a Greek mirror match. I don't see any forward units apart from the Explorers. I don't think I've ever heard this was a Liberty music before. What is this one? Interesting. Some are so rare. Right, so red's the first one to go H2, 400 wood with a frontier wagon, so that will be a second trading post for him. Uh, blue's also grabbing a trade post here. Just read priests can also build uh, churches, town centers, and trade posts, so he'll be able to get this quite fast. 
So he might make it in time for this pass, but he's not having the priest help him build. So we won't be seeing that in action just yet. Lots of coin focus. I'm guessing Brazil will be getting some uh, villages through coin as they have a slave trade where they can use an increasing amount of coin each time to get five, uh, five settlers in. They also have the option to whip slaves using wood to increase their gal rates by 1%. Each time they use it, it increases by 10 gold. So uh, Brazil's also aged up now. They get an agricultural wagon on each age up, so essentially a free mill or plantation on every age up. And the interesting thing about Brazil is uh, using the market, you actually cannot increase food gal rates from hunts. You can only increase gal rates from mills. So uh, Brazilian mills are much better than hunts quite early. So normally mills are pretty useless until um, you know you get the first two upgrades compared to hunts. But that's not the case with Brazil because their market upgrades the, the mill instead of the normal hunts at a quite cheap rate actually. So essentially about the same cost as hunting dogs I believe is the mill upgrade. Uh, his explorer seems to be waiting for the second trade post so each player will be tied with uh, trade post. We got some hussars going for a raid now. Anglo or natives have not been used yet. Alright, let's see if this raid is successful or not. All the villages are quite tight and near the town center, so... Except for this one, that will be going down. Yeah, one villager down, that will be the end of that little raid for now. He's getting a barracks. Stable here with three more hussars, actually. That was probably a shipment. Alright, so we got a couple of houses going down. He still has something garrisoned. Maybe it's the priest? No, the priest is there. He has something garrisoned. I don't think he's aware of it yet. Right, so the rest of the hussars are coming in to join. Alright, he got the villagers out finally, so no more idle time. <laughs> Ali coming in with the whip. He's fighting the priest here. The priest will go down. No, that was a villager actually. He's getting the villagers. <laughs> villagers performing some martial arts here. It's always an interesting sight. We got musketeers now. And some volunteers coming in. So volunteers are pretty weak units, but they run quite fast. At a speed of 5. Alright, uh, Capital Age, that was a fast fortress from Brazil. So we got another mill. or plant. Oh, he's going for a plantation. He does not intend to take these faraway mines, it seems. And there seems to be another treasure here for another 160 experience. So with the fast fortress, he has access to some cannons, uh, some montados, and a town center XP trickle, and a hussar army. So some powerful cards for Brazil are now available. So we got Belgium spreading out behind the town center. A few hussars here. <laughs> they're, they're so close, they just don't know. Oh, that red's also uh, H3 now. Will he be going for Kree? No, he won't be going for Kree. Kree is really good because you can get uh, another five villagers. The Kree of the boy villagers. He's getting an outpost. I personally think it's a better position over here. Uh, near the silver mine so you can garrison the villagers a bit faster. <laughs> Alright, so an increase in volunteers it seems. So he might be training volunteers at the moment. No other buildings, no stables. Stable coming in. Okay, I don't see a town hall, so um, Brazil might be getting to the 25 villager limit and won't be able to make more quite soon. Some force uh, publics here. 
Ooh, defensive house structure, I like that. Nobody is touching the water. We got mob barracks, another stable. Okay, stable and two barracks now. Brazil has access to Carabiners. Carabiners, uh, I don't remember the correct name. So, um, if he goes for that, he will be pretty powerful in anti cav, as they have uh, multiply against cav, even in range. Herding is still in progress. This is usually how it goes for Brazil. You have some villages on the mill and some on hunts. And get plantations because obviously they're more um, expensive. So it's better to get them free instead. Whereas you still hunt, have hunts. We got some Gatling guns for Belgium here. Uh, so we can expect him to go forward quite soon. Do remember that each Belgian trade post slows the enemy economy by 5%. We got some Montados in now, so any skirmishes and heavy infantry... Sorry, by skirmishes I mean dragoons and heavy infantry will be in danger. Oh, they're countered as... Okay. We got goons and their ultimate counter right over there. Alright, so blue will be attempting to go in with the 8-speed Montados. The rest of the units are now coming up. Some volunteers here that will counter the Dragoons. Another split here with a single unit. Red not really responding just yet. Alright, now he is. Good. Alright, Force Republics. And Hussars will be able to deal some heavy damage. He's out of a mine now. We got some more units here, some more Mon Montados coming in. Goons and heavy infantry stand no chance. Although they do deal times two versus light cavalry, so uh, Republics here will be a big counter towards this whole army. So red is able to win this fight. So we might see a push from red, but uh, he seems to not want to push just yet. We do have two Gatling guns here. He might want to seize a trade post and get it for himself. Therefore, it's slowing the opponent's economy further and maybe getting the route upgraded so he can have more consistent economy just rolling in. Montado's going around, more volunteers coming in. It might be best for him to go some Hussars, since these are skirmishers over here. So Montados are now rolling in again. Trade post right here, Gatling guns will spot. One Montado going down. Another half HP essentially, the rest of the army coming in. That Montado, oh it lives with 2 HP. Look at that, 2 HP. Alright, so his army is coming in. We got four idle goons here. Let's see what's going on in his base. We got an artillery foundry coming in, so we're going to expect some cannons, perhaps culverins coming in. More housing. Alright, so some villages are quite far from home here. Um, some hunts over here. And a final mine there. So Belgium still is in home. Brazil has a very good defensive structure over here with these placements and a little gap to walk through. Some idle villages, but um, plantations and. Oh, he's got passive aunties in. Yeah, so getting those free agricultural wagons. Can be a big, big help. We got some line infantry coming in now. Anti cav and whatnot.
All right, so blue is on the move with some Montados coming in from the bottom. And the rest of his army is following quite nearby. He'll be attempting to siege this trade post. Overall, he's not countering Red's army too much at the moment. Right, so the rest of the army is here. But we do have passive antis here. If I remember correctly, they are anti-artillery. Ooh, they're wasting time not firing. All right, here we go. We can see the stats. Yes, they are anti-artillery indeed. One is about to go down. Uh, Montano's focusing these units rather than the skirm, I mean goons. Uh, not the best idea since these guys are anti-goons. And <laughs> not really anti skirmishes. Passive Valante will hit that as well. Yep, insta kill. As is a times four multiplier versus the rather weak Gatling guns. So that will be a trade post down for red. The mines here seems to have depleted as well, so all those units, I mean, villagers will have to walk to the top mine. Right, Voluntarios have caught the villagers, they have 5 speed, so uh, they can outrun villagers. So we can expect some high casualties, although he does not seem to be following up on that. Alright, so he looks like he's aware of this mine, as all the villagers are going up there. Uh, more Montanos coming in here, more Voluntarios coming in, and a Town Hog coming down. He must have hit the villager cap at this point in time. I'm looking to increase it using the town hall big button. Right, he is going up. Uh, he might focus the trading post like last time. We'll find out. Alright, Pastor Valante is here. Lots of Voltaires. They're very weak, both HP and attack wise, so they're not too difficult. It would be hilarious if I'm the one that crashed. Yes. Alright, looks like I'm not the one that crashed. Oh boy. Ah, uh, we're having some lag. Hopefully it passes away. I'm used to have lag on wall. <laughs> Alright, hopefully that was the last one. Alright, uh, so the Dragoons are going into the Voluntarius here a bit. They are still skirmishers, even if weak. The goons do manage to pick up the Passa Valante, but the goons will also go down with it. Montanos are also down. It's down to Voluntarios versus Republics. My bet's on the Republics. Oh, we got bicycle infantry coming in. They are anti skirmishers. Uh, sorry, yeah, they are anti skirmishers as well. So, um, Voluntarios will be getting wiped out quite fast, although he seems to be. Hesitating. As as much as they counter each other, this one's multiplier is much higher. We got Montanos coming in. Montanos are a big bicycle infantry counter. Things are getting quite complicated with bicycle infantry getting involved, actually. Alright, we got Brazil focusing on mines below. He will be trying to go up. The villagers here will be spotted rather soon. Montados have sight of them now. Bontai is attacking. Here we go. We got one down. Two down. Bicycle infantry coming in. Hopefully he focuses the Voluntarios rather than the Montados. Alright, he's able to save the rest of the villagers. Alright, both... 
parties are backing and not on pursuit. So the score is pretty even, 174, 161, like 10 points, 15 points, but uh, not too big. It's still winnable from either side. We got some Carboneers coming in, anti hand cav. I just need to make a message. Alright, I'm back. Alright, my mobile Twitch was acting up. Okay, we're good. Outpost here, good defense for the villagers. More Montados are now present with some Dragoons also mixed between Volatiles and Carboneers together. It will try coming from the bottom. There are no villages here, so the outpost will spot them quite early on. So if Red can uh, notice that early, he might be able to get a few military picks. Especially with skirmishes present here, he can probably pick up both the goons and the montados. Whoa, another interesting song. Just started. I don't think I've heard this one either. That will be one villager down. Ah, that will be it. Red is now pushing in. So the thing with bicycle infantry is they actually have a 1.5 bonus against villagers. So once bicycle infantry catch your villagers, they're pretty dead. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So yeah, he's pushing in. There's some villagers here, he probably won't see them though. Coming in, he will probably notice the mills and plantations at the back. Oh, he does go down. He will notice these villagers, he'll be able to kill them if he sees them. Oh, he's going around. Blue is now returning. Next to the skirmishers, oh no. Ah, another lag spike here, sadly, but... That's skirmishers versus goons and... That's an obvious win for skirmishers. Right, we got some skirmishers here, and these are anti skirmish so bicycle infantry. If they focus right now, they will get some picks. No, they're focusing the cabineers. They have a malice against heavy infantry. But the skirmishers have essentially cleaned this fight on the left side, and Brazil's with, left with these units. Very big victory for Red here. Yes, that will be a huge win for Red. We got some more Carboneers in. Sadly, they are counted by the Republic. The first Publics. Ah, oh, if only he knew. The villagers were right here under the bicycle infantry. We got a big wave of villagers coming in, so if they're caught by blue, they can, uh, they might potentially get massacred. Some volunteers still standing there. Some skirmishers are idling. All right, so they're sieging down this house. Smart move. We got some villager movement here. Probably going for this mine over here. The water is still empty from both sides. Blue still has a higher score. Uh, we might also see some kernel action. I do want to see the Plaga in action because it can wipe a whole army down. If you've seen my streams before, you know how good the Plaga ability can be. <laughs> and how annoying and devastating it can be for the enemy. He seems to not have a post office yet for uh, additional immigrant support. If he goes for that, he will have some additional bonuses, but just not yet. Red is now sieging down the trade post while uh, rebuilding the one on the bottom left. Don't forget, Belgium has the ability to slow down the enemy economy by 5% for each trade post they hold. That includes native uh, settlements, so it's actually an advantage for Belgium to uh, have every single trade post they can. So right now, he's about to have a 10% decrease. 
decrease on the enemy. No religion here. No religion here either. So neither player has a boost in economy. Some Hussars are present now. That will be a great counter for both of these units that Red is focusing on. No uh, anti-cavalry, including the Rangers over here. This music's really tense. I'm liking it. I don't think I've ever, ever heard this one either. Alright, I'm just gonna st say, stay silent for a bit, and we'll have the tension build up from that music. Alright, this outpost, we'll probably see these villagers here. The explorer sees their villagers here. And he has a lot of hussars. That's dangerous for both this area and this area at the same time. If this outpost notices all the villagers here, not only will the ones mining, but the ones also hunting will be recognized. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Getting the Hussars down, but he is caught by the Rangers. But he is completely vulnerable against hand cavalry. And these Hussars are indeed upgraded units. The Rangers will go down almost instantly. Bicycle infantry is cut down to two. He is trying to save the Force Publiques, but they're being getting mowed down. The villagers are also present. Villagers are now getting attacked. The Hussars in the back seem to be getting snared, but a lot of villagers are going down anyway. Oh boy, that's a big hit on red. Red was expanding without protecting his villagers too much. An outpost could have saved him great time here. Alright, the remaining villagers here seem uh, to be safe. These ones are also ineffective for the current time being. Uh, Hussar count has dropped greatly. We have some line infantry in the back that will be able to deal with Hussars. Now the Force Public being able to outnumber the Hussars. In my opinion, he should have fired at the start as well. I don't think he would have suffered this many losses if the Force Publics were kind of just shooting, running, shooting, running, rather than just running. If it was going to fight in the end anyway. So, um... I wonder if this outpost can indeed see this village. I think it's in range. I think we can expect some hussars coming from the downside. However, he is pushing. Right now, for this army, a plaga would be able to wipe the whole thing out. So if uh, west side was able to age up to age 4, he will be able to use plaga. I believe it is age 4. More hussars coming in. So this looks like a wipeout for red. Although the Hussars are still tanking, it might change when it's uh, down to the Brave on Tires. So yeah, Brave on Tires are not that strong, especially in HP, so he will be backing off. That's a smart choice for blue. Alright, so we got... More Dragoons and Line Infantry coming in. So his army roster has changed completely from Bicycle Infantry and Force Publics into Goons and Line Infantry. However, the Skirmishers are actually good against these units. So we'll have to see how that turns out. We got some more Hussars. They might be able to pick up these Skirmishers, but the Goons and Line Infantry will be dealing with them quite rapidly. 
So yeah, he does back away with the hussars. I'm pretty sure this outpost can see these villages. So it's uh, essentially only a matter of time before he masses some hussars. If he can hit this, it will be another huge blow on red. Yeah, both outposts should be able to clearly see the red villages over here. So yeah, it's a moment of time. He might be aging up any time now. Maybe. I'd really like to see some Plaga action in a tournament match. So this game is about to hit the 30 minute mark. Not very common in a 1v1. But then again, the Pyoto and Happy Mumu games, two of them had reached, I think, the 40 minute marks. Need to alt tab just for a second here. But we'll be fast enough. Alright, going back into the game. Alright, he is now sieging the outposts. So he will lose vision, but he still sh will be aware of the fact that the villagers are indeed over here. Villagers here. Hussars and Voluntarius coming in from the side. Force Publics are alone here, so if the Hussars do make a move... Uh, there aren't too many, but they should still be able to make a hit on these dudes. <coughs> Voluntarios are fast units, so they'll be able to chase quite easily. But they have to be careful of... Well, units in general, they're not too strong. So uh, as long as they're not outnumbered, they'll, they'll win. Uh, they are quite strong against this composition, since goons and veteran line infantry are both countered by Voluntarios. However, the Hussars... He must protect against this roster. But the Hussars won't do good against these units, so he must stay on top of the skirmisher-like units. We seem to be experiencing some more lag at the moment. Blue is backing, but he has passive Valantes again. So he will probably attempt to hold this ground over here. Yeah, you're right. Some a lot of Wars of Liberty mechanics are being ignored. We, we're not seeing much of faith, spies, or you know, just very unique abilities and techs in game. I can guarantee you, I use them all the time. That's why I keep talking about them. I would have used the Colonel time slowing ability, followed by a Priest Condemn ability to make all units weaker in that area, followed by a Plaga. So all the units within that circle would be slowed down, weakened in HP, and being rapidly killed by a Plaga. So lots of villagers going down here. I'll be a big hit on red. Lots of facades and volunteers are still up, both past the Vellante, still alive, although a bit weakened. We got some villagers backing away over here. He seems to have not switched to any mills of the sort, and we have a lot of idle villagers here. That is not good for red at all. We've got, we have skirmishes again, although there's a lot of facades. Plantation over here coming down. Blue is not pushing at the moment. There's another villager over here. More skirmishes. Alright, let's... Alright. Little fight going here. More lag. That's a big freeze. West Sider did mention he experiences lag often. So... We can assume that maybe he doesn't have a very stable connection. Skirmishers will be getting killed off by these hussars quite rapidly. Although it looks like he's backing away, although I can't really tell right now as there's another spike here. No, he will be pursuing those skirmishers down.
Right, that will be 2-0 for West Sider. As this is a best of three, um, it means that Blue will be advancing to the round of 32. Uh, thank you for both players for participating in the tournament. This game was quite close. There were many points in which both armies were wiped. Uh, sadly, the first game, uh, a fast fortress versus a rush. Uh, yeah, it didn't go out too well for Red. Yeah, it was tight fights. <laughs> Alright, let's see quick stats here. Uh, yeah, the resources were quite similar. Uh, not too big of a gap. He did lose a lot of villages at the end, so that's only natural. Yeah, he couldn't deal with the Hussars very well. That's that's an on-point observation. On-point, yeah. So yeah, quite equal in military. The units killed do come from villagers quite a bit. If we go here, we can see a big, big drop in villagers here and here. So from about 50 down to 39, and then from 52 to 42 again which slowed his eco down. So if we go back to our resources gathered, we can see they were relatively equal until this point here, about 21 minutes in. Um, yeah, there's another drop here. Maybe it was the one at a time he was relocating all of his units. Yeah, so they were going pretty equal. He even... Red even caught up and surpassed Blue at this point, but then did go down again. 